Welcome to track number one of Church Planting. I've seen people dying on the ward. It's one of the frightening things when someone knows that he's going to die. It's one of the terrible experiences. They are frightened beyond their wits. I tell you, when somebody is given a diagnosis and you know you are dying, it changes the... You can even go mad. In fact, as I'm speaking, I know of somebody who's gone mad. He was given a diagnosis like that. You can go mad. God does not give us our days. He keeps the months that are your months. And He's telling you, prepare to meet God. You see, when my father was alive, he told me the way you spend the first 25 years of your life will determine how you spend the next 45 years of your life. And he was right. By the time I was 25, I was virtually a doctor and I was a Christian and I was a pastor and so on. And it has determined the rest of my life on this earth to a large extent. But not only is this 70 years of existence what we are talking about, but years and years of eternity are coming up. All the things we are building on this earth have no lasting value. I promise you. Even, look, not only are our houses and businesses and lands and properties and whatever, not only are they of very little value or no value, but even the church buildings that we are building have very little value. And I am a builder of many, many churches. Those things are... Why do, why do you think Jesus didn't build a church? Huh? Why do you think he didn't build a church? And you know what he said in John 17 when he prayed? He said, Father, I have finished the work that thou gavest me to do. And I have manifested thy name unto the men that thou gavest me. I'm ready. I'm done. I'm ready to leave. I'm ready to go. Many church buildings have been built big. When the founder dies, when the senior pastor dies, when the pastor who started the church dies, the church becomes, the building becomes a shell. The founder of the Four Square Gospel Church, she built a 5,000 seater cathedral in Los Angeles when she was alive. It was used to run services, 5,000 people, several services a week for some time. And after that, that was it. It had never been used for that. In fact, recently it has been bought by somebody who is running a church. And the son of this woman said she's happy that the building is being, has been bought by a church. Many people who even did this church work, the buildings they built have been torn down. So ladies and gentlemen, we must now find what is true, what is of true value. You understand? I'm not saying we shouldn't build churches. We, should, we have to build because we need them. We need to. We need bigger buildings. We need more buildings to house whatever vision God has given to us. But that must not be the focus of whatever we are doing. We have to refocus on things that have lasting value. Amen. Things that are going to last. And you must focus on things that are going to last. You must focus on preparing to meet with your God. Because it's just a matter of time before you stand before Him in eternity. So everybody here must now refocus. Lift up your eyes and know that your days are numbered. You cannot pass that day. If it's 40, you won't pass 40. If it's 50, you won't pass 50. If it's 55, you won't pass 55. If it's 65, you won't pass 65. God has given everybody a certain number of months. Pastor, but I am a thief believer. And I believe three score and ten years. Glory to God. You believe in three score and ten years? It's good for you to believe in three score and ten years. But let me tell you two examples. That will throw your three score and ten uh, formula into jeopardy. 
Jesus Christ said of John the Baptist that of all the prophets and of all the men of God who ever walked on this earth, none was greater than John the Baptist. And he died at the age of 30 at the whims and fancies of some young girl or somebody's birthday party. And they went and beheaded him and brought his head on a plate. And Jesus said, of all the people who have been born by women, there is no greater man of God than this. And he died when he was 30. That's the greatness. It says upside down of what we believe. Jesus himself, 33 years, he, he was born. He has finished his work. Ladies and gentlemen, we don't know how long we have. You see, one day, there was one of my pastors was going somewhere to one of these countries as a missionary. And when he sat by me, the Spirit of God came upon me and I gave him a word of knowledge. It was after I listened to what I said. I said to him, always think like a dying man. If you think like a dying man, you'll always be wise. And it's true. You see, Solomon, he wrote in his book, Vanity of Vanity, All is Vanity. People say he wrote songs of Solomon when he was young and sexy and he had a lot of energy. Then he wrote Proverbs in his middle age when he was wiser and he wrote Ecclesiastes when he was depressed and older. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying? Songs of Solomon. He wrote three books. Songs of Solomon when he was young and sexy and full of zeal. Oh, my love and my dad, your breasts are like this, your neck is like that, your this is like this, your dad is that, and so on. Then he wrote Proverbs when he was practically a middle age and he was building and so on. And then when he was depressed and everything was useless, he said, all is vanity. Everything is vanity. This is useless. This is useless. This is useless. Everything I've done is useless. And what's the conclusion of the whole matter? Fear God and keep his commandments. <laughs> But I don't agree with that theory. I believe that all these things that were written are the realities of life. And they are the truth. He was not just depressed. He was telling us the truth. Vanity of vanities, everything is useless. He said, I built houses. I built me gardens. I got me servants. I made me fountains. I made me gardens. I built everything. I married any woman. He said, anything that came to my heart, I did not withhold my heart from it. And what is the conclusion of all this? It's all useless. It's all vanity. And what's the conclusion that he comes to? Is that fear God. Keep his commandments. Whatever God tells you to do, keep that commandment and serve him and receive it and believe it now. <laughs> Hallelujah. You don't have to become an old man before you come and see that everything is useless. You can believe it now. And when you believe the wisdom of God now, you become far wiser than your years. You become higher than your age. You grow way beyond your physical age. And you become a pot of wisdom and greatness before God and even before men. Because you have believed things that it took people years and years to come to the realization that this is all useless. Prepare to meet your God. What will you have when you stand before Him? When you arrive at the new Jerusalem, we shall be in the new Jerusalem. I said, we shall be in the new Jerusalem. Bible saw and I saw a city coming down from heaven. The new Jerusalem. Prepared. The city of God. Where the Christ and the glory of Christ will be forever. And we shall be in the new Jerusalem. We shall be in the presence of God forever. And our minds must go from, I will live in Pretoria, I will live in Johannesburg, I will live in London, I will live in New York, to the place where we say, I will be in the new Jerusalem. We shall be in the house of God, in the presence of the Lord. Our minds must now go away from the earthly aspirations, the sun castles. I was telling the morning service that one day I went to the beach with my children, and I built, a, I called my sons and, and so on, and I built a beautiful castle. Big castle, made out of sand. And we built a castle, we built a moat around it, so that the enemy couldn't come in. You understand? You know what a moat is? Like a little a water, a, a channel of water around the, the, the castle. And we built it with towers, and so on. It was very beautiful. And just as I finished building my beautiful sand castle, do you know what happened? Can you imagine what happened? 
Ladies and gentlemen, could you, can you imagine the end of the story? I wish I had a happy ending to my story. A wave. Just one of the waves came and took my sand castle away. And it was gone in a minute. That is what our lives are like. We are building sand castles. We are building things which will be taken away in one moment. All our hearts and our lives. You see, I'm talking about, you see, today I'm preaching to your heart. You see, you can be doing something, but your heart is not there. You may be working and burning money, but your heart is not money. You may be bringing money to the house of God, but your heart is not, the money has not caught your heart. Your heart is not there, your heart is higher. Your heart is with God. David was a king, but his heart was with God. His heart was not in politics. His heart was not in power. His heart was not in wealth. His heart was in God, but he was a king. I said he was a king, but his heart was with God. So you can be a worker, you can be whatever, but your heart is with God. And God is now looking for people whose hearts are with Him. We have to come to the place where we are now refocus on Jesus and on Him and on heaven and we must start preparing oh my friend you don't need to die before you believe what I'm saying you don't know how long you will live last week or two weeks ago I was in the mortuary one of our church members she's just about 35 years old she died you see the doctors couldn't diagnose anything and even at the, I, I went to the post-mortem because I was interested in, in knowing what killed her. Because every test was done and everything was negative. So I was there. <laughs> Look, you are nothing, I am nothing. You see, so when I got there, I said, I, uh, there were several bodies, dead bodies lying around. So I said, there was another lady doctor from our, uh, one of our church. Uh, remember, I said, I said to her, oh, where is, which one is she? Which of these? You see, all of them lying there naked. Three people on one stretcher. <laughs> so I said, which of these is she? Because a few weeks ago she was in America, flying down, bringing her designer dresses and whatever for a factory and so on. She's a big time, big time. Big time business lady. So I said, which of these is she? And she said, this is, this is her. You know why I couldn't see her? Because they are, they are, see, when you go for a post-mortem, you see, I, I, everybody should go once before you go, I mean, for your actual, <laughs> what do you call it? <laughs> ha! When you see what they do over there, you will wonder why God listens to a prayer of somebody like me and somebody like you. We are nothing. You see ladies who would not, for the daintiness of their feet, they would not put their foot on the floor. You see them lying there naked. You'll be lying on people. People will be lying. People that you wouldn't touch in your normal life. Not would only would they be touching you. They will be lying. Or they will be under you. They will be on top of you. They will be kissing you. Somebody you wouldn't kiss. <laughs> <laughs> When you go for a person, they slit your head from here to here. And they pull your face down and fold it over. And they fold this place back. And they cut off your brain inside and bring it out. I remember when President Kennedy died. Shortly after the, he died, they were talking about the president's brain. They have cut the president's brain. It's like chopped corned beef. So I said, which one is she? So she said, let me wear glass and show you so she went and put on glass she put on glass and then she she held the face the face i couldn't see her face because there, there was no face the face had been folded like this you never knew that your face could be folded you see <laughs> hey! you wonder why we do anything else apart from serving god you wonder so she put on gloves and she turned the face back like this, back like this. And when she turned the face, then she, the face came back and she pulled the hair back and said, that's her. I said, I see, it's her. 
I said, wow. And then her intestine, all hair was open. Her intestine, she put her hand, she brought something. I said, this is the liver. See, there's nothing. Pathology, there was no pathology. This is the lung. This is a piece of this, a piece of that, a piece of that, a piece. This is a, a, this is a rich person. Who was alive a few weeks earlier. A few days. You wonder. And the house that she built, maybe her curtains that she put up. She's just putting up for putting up for some other girl to come in. Because if you die, try not to die, but if you die, your husband will marry somebody else. If you try. <laughs> Mercy. I said Mercy. <laughs> The best thing is not to die. But if you die, even at the funeral, he will be thinking of which beloved he is going to get. <laughs> one, one lady was there, a Christian lady. I was talking to one brother. His, his wife had died. And I was asking what it's like to marry again. And he was telling me when his wife was sick, his wife was dying. His wife used to say, Would you like to marry Susie? Look, look at Susie. Susie, because she was dying. You can marry Susie. Then he said, What are you saying? He said, No, no, Susie is good. Oh, 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 what about Rose? You like Rose? <laughs> oh, Francisca. What about Francisca? And she kept on showing him the different girls in the church he should marry. And he was so angry with her. But she knew that if she dies, he will marry again. And lo and behold, he married. <laughs> Our lives are nothing. Oh, please. You are physically, not, and all that we are doing here is not, please don't wait till you are old and depressed before you start saying, it's useless. It's all this is nothing. Wasted years. I've wasted my time. Believe it now. Don't wait. Look. Don't wait till a doctor that knows you put you in bed and say you have six months to live. That you say, Lord, you, you, when you go to the hospital, don't you see tape recorders and Bibles and Christian books? You see them there by the uh, people who are on admission. Don't wait until you are in hospital before you start to believe these things. Many years ago, I went to see a 39 year old lawyer. He was dying in the hospital. I'll never forget it because he had done some work for us. And when I got there, I saw a, a man in the midst of his years. But he said something to us that I never forgot. As he lay on the bed, he said to myself and, and my assistant, he said, he said, Bishop, I, I don't want to promise. You know, he said, I don't want to promise. Even there, he still didn't want to promise. He said, I don't want to promise. But if the Lord raises me up, I will serve him. Then he continued. and said, even... Even if it is full time. But he still said, I don't want to promise. <laughs> because the possibility is that you rise from there. And even when you rise from there, still, you have conditions. It's time for us to start thinking. We shall be in the new Jerusalem. If you want to get there, turn now from your sins. When you're washed, you can be among God's chosen ones. You can be in the new Jerusalem. And you can be in the new Jerusalem. Oh, I say, you can be in the new Jerusalem. If you want to get there, turn now from your sins. When you're washed, you can be among God's chosen ones. You can be in the new Jerusalem. You can be. You can be in the new Jerusalem. Mm -mm -mm -mm. You can be. And that's where we are going. Not to New York. Not to the Twin Towers. Where are the Twin Towers? 
a wave came and took them away. Sandcastle. Recently, a bank manager came to my house. I was asleep when she came. She was coming, she was passing by, she was traveling. And I was asleep. And so she left her card at the security, with the security man. And when I got up, a security man brought the card to me. And I was staying there with my associate pastor. As soon as I saw the card, Barclays Bank, you know, in the blue, Treasury something, Department Head of something, Manager something. As soon as I read all the things, I don't know, something occurred to me. I said, ah, a manager of a sun castle has brought her card to me. <laughs> it's true. It's a sun castle. All these things are useless. I didn't say it's in the Bible. Or you want us to read it from Ecclesiastes. That's why God is turning our attention. He's turning our hearts. He's turning our hearts to Him. I don't care what work you do. I don't care where you work. He's turning our hearts up, 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 up. The Bible says in Colossians 3, If you be then risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth at the right hand of God, and set your affections on things above. Think about things above. Set your love and your affection on things above. That's how you can send somebody. And that's when we become useful to God. There is something people used to say. And that is also another delusion. They said, you are too heavenly minded to be of any earthly use. How many have heard that before? How many have heard that before? You are too heavenly minded to be of any earthly use. Well, I can tell you, most of us are too earthly minded to be of any heavenly use. We are so earthly minded and our minds and our hearts are so much fixed here that we are of no heavenly use. You cannot be of heavenly use if you are earthly minded. You cannot work for God. He cannot send you. He cannot do anything with you because all your mind is to how to build things here, get more here, grab more. And we call this faith message, is, uh, is what we are calling a faith message, it's not a faith message. Don't degrade faith. Faith is not grasping for things. Faith is not grasping with selfish and greedy grasping of human beings for all kinds of possessions. You call that a faith message. Go and read your Bible about the men of faith. Go and ask Abraham what he did to have faith. And Moses, the Bible says, by, by faith he forsook Egypt. How many people will rise from this and say, by faith I'll forsake Devon and go into a place where there is nothing, where there is wilderness. By faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the king. Most of us are afraid of everything. We will not make one step for God. And Bible said, and he endured as seeing that which was invisible. How many, of, how many of us see invisible things? All we are seeing is visible things. All we are seeing is money. All we are seeing is houses and cars. Bible says Moses and John are seeing that which was invisible. His eyes were on things above. Oh, well, you don't like my message. Tell somebody it's a good message we are hearing tonight. It's a good message. By faith, when he came to years, he chose rather to suffer affliction. He chose rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. Today we cannot say people are choosing to suffer affliction. We admit and we allow every kind of evil into the church. Every kind of abomination is, is in the church now. We, 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 we do not suffer. There's no suffering. When you use the word suffer, it's almost like you are using a bad word in the church. It is as though suffering, su suffering is a bad thing. Suffering is something that is included in Christianity. If any man want to come after me, come after me, I will receive him in peace to my rest only he should know that any man who holds the plow and looks back isn't fit for my kingdom take up your cross follow me deny yourself follow me take up your cross if you wanna be my disciple take up your cross 
follow me. Deny yourself, follow me. Take up your cross if you want to be my disciple. Living for Jesus isn't easy, isn't easy. But God has promised to sustain you. Don't be afraid for he is faithful. Take up your cross and follow me. Deny yourself, follow me. Take up your cross if you want to be my disciple. Take up your cross, follow me. Deny yourself, follow me. Take up your cross if you want to be my disciple. I didn't say it. I didn't say it. I didn't say it. I wouldn't say that. I would, Jesus never lowered the standard to get followers. I'll say it again. Jesus never the lowered the standard in order to get people. He never brought the thing down so that more people would join. He kept it there. This is it. If anyone come unto me and hate not his father and his mother, his wife and his children, and his sons and his daughters and his brothers and sisters, yea, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. He cannot. He cannot. You cannot. Ladies and gentlemen, we are so earthly minded and we are calling earthly minded grasping for earthly things faith. And Jesus said, why do you think about what to eat? Why do you think about what to drink? Why do you think about what you wear? Then he continued, O oh, ye of little faith. That is the least kind of faith you can ever have. Is to have your mind on what you eat, what you drink, how you survive. That is the least kind of faith ever anybody can call. Never call it a faith message. That is not a faith message. When the faith preacher used one example of food and clothing, then you've taken it to be a faith message is to get things. It's just one example of something that you can have. Are you listening to me? Are you there? Amen. So ladies and gentlemen, God is preparing us in these meetings for heaven. And, and those are the words he gave me to give to you. Jesus said, I have given them the words that thou givest me. Let's now lift up our eyes and see how can we prepare for heaven. Amen. Are you there? I told you to turn to John, did I not? Okay. Tell somebody, look, this man is preaching a very good message. (laughs) Wonderful. John chapter 4. You know the story. John 4 verse 34. Jesus was talking to his disciples. And he said, are you there? He said, my meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. Verse 35. Say not ye, there are yet four months. Amen. No one should delay anything you are doing. Alright? And then come at harvest. Don't say that. Behold, I say unto you, lift up your eyes and look unto the fields. Amen. Amen. For they are white already to harvest. Verse 36, he that reapeth, receiveth wages, and gathereth fruits unto life eternal, that both he that soweth and he that reapeth may rejoice together. And the line just a small part or circle it, he that reapeth, receiveth wages, and gathereth fruit unto life eternal. Amen. Are you there? Gathering fruit for eternal life. Let us now begin to gather things that can be used in heaven. Amen. Let us now begin to gather fruit unto life eternal. In other words, something we can use in heaven. How many want to have something in heaven? A certain was going on a journey and he was told, 
when you get to the river or the lake and you're going to cross, you will only be allowed to take grapes. You get it? That is the only thing you can take across. But this man did not believe it. So he gathered mangoes, pineapples, guavas, bananas, groundnuts, peanuts, plantains. What else do you have? He had fruits galore. Peaches, pears, everything. And he had just one or two grapes. And he had a whole truck, but he said he was taking it to the other side, and that was going what he was going to use to start his business. Because they were all migrating. And they said the only thing we are allowing into our car, just like Switzerland, they don't allow certain cars to come. You know, when you get to Switzerland, they check your car, your tires, say, no, you spoil our road, go back. You have to go around, go through another country. <laughs> Hitler, he couldn't use Switzerland. They mined all the roads. They couldn't drive through. You know? So, you can't come. And the only thing you can bring is grape. But he, he thought, no, grape doesn't mean grape. Grape means fruits. And, I mean, grape means things, you know? So he gathered and gathered a whole truckload. When he got to the river and the boat, they looked through. And they said, no, 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 no. Banana, no banana. Out. What? I just so spent a fortune, my fortune, my savings. I spent on bananas. Ha! Ah, you cannot. Out. They brought pineapple. Ah, my mother gave me her whole farm. Up, uh, no, out, no pineapple. He got to the guavas. I had 13 boxes of guavas. No, sorry, God. He got to the pears, refrigerated pears. And then Peter, they said, no, sorry. Out, cross, 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 cross. They called security men, so they take it out, take it out, 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 out. And then in the lay, he was left with he, nothing. He had this. Two little grape, three, you know, most of them were thrown out. He just two or three grapes. And there he was going. You see one long 16-wheeler truck full of his fruits and things that he was exporting. He was taking to his destination. He went with the two grapes like that. <laughs> and he went onto the boat with nothing. The Bible says you shall be saved as through fire. If ever there is a fire in the night and you are sleeping, you run out of your house wearing only your pajamas. No even pants. <laughs> and some people don't sleep with anything on, you know. <laughs> Mercy, better pull along a bed sheet on your way so that you can cover yourself. And you watch your whole house burn. My suits are in the house. My trousers are in the house. My dresses are in the house. My handbags are in the house. My briefcase in the house. My checkbooks in the house. My DVDs in the house. My television is in the house. My remote control is in the house. My new furniture is in the house. And there you are standing with a bed sheet. <laughs> Nothing. That's how some people's salvation is going to be. He says that he gathereth fruit unto life eternal. And he has told you what the fruit is. And still you continue to persist in gathering everything. You are gathering pears. You are gathering purpose. You are gathering pineapples. You are gathering anything that cannot cross. That is your focus. That is your concentration now. Everything that cannot go across... Anything that cannot go on the boat, everything that has been disallowed, that is what your time and your energy and your life and your sponsorship is for. Things that cannot cross. Not a single grape. And in the grape that you have, you add them on the way and you were just were left with the, the, the tip. <laughs> Two like that, to hold it like that. And you cross with nothing. Only that you don't believe in it. You see, that's why, because we don't believe the word of God. Maybe we've not been preaching it. How much can we take across? Look, my father died. He took nothing. Nothing. What he built, he left for us. Nothing. Shoes, clothes, nothing. 
He went. Free. Gone. With the wind. My grandfather died in Switzerland. They cremated him. When my mother went to Switzerland to see, he was in a little bottle like that on the shelf. That's your grandfather on the shelf there, in the, in the jam jar. <laughs> mercy. Zigzag mercy. <laughs> the vice president of Ghana, he died some years ago. And they cremated him. And they took him onto the beach, in a, onto the sea, and they poured his ashes. And I saw the crumbs coming out. I said, Look at the vice president being, he's blowing. Somebody is going to breathe. <gasps> Achoo! And you, you breathe in the vice president. <laughs> the crumbs will fall in the sea. And a fish will go. Pop, 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 pop. Then you go to a restaurant and say, "Can I have some grilled fish?" You are having grilled vice president. <laughs> and they'll be asking, "What will you have? Will you have it with French fries, or will you have it with uh, uh, baked potatoes, or will you have it with rice?" I have the vice president with rice, please. <laughs> We are so earthly minded, we are not of much heavenly use. He said he gathers fruit unto life eternal. Eternal life. Look, today I just want to tell you something. You know? And with that I'll be closing. No, I'll not close. I'll not close with that. Because I have to show you something else. Where is my book? Yeah. So, now that I've said all that I've said, huh, what shall we do? Ask somebody, so what should I do now? How many want to know what to do now? Huh? How many want to know what to do now? All right. I've, I've got the key. The key is in this book here, this one. Make sure you have a copy. I don't know if we have enough, but make sure you get one of these. Now listen to this. Listen carefully because you are all clever people. Anybody in this church is clever. If God huh, were to turn into a man and come into this church, what would he do? What would he do? If God, if God came to Devon, sorry, if God came to Devon for three weeks, huh? no, I'm going to give you nine suggestions. Perhaps he will set up several universities. How many know that if I came to the South African government to see President Tabo in Baker and I told him I was coming to set up six universities in South Africa, how many know that he will stretch out his hand to me and say, you are welcome to South Africa with your investments. And uh, we appreciate all of you West Africans who are bringing investment. But if we came to the same president and said, I ha- I'm a Bible teacher. I'm coming to teach the Bible in your country. What would they say? Uh, you better see immigration for some further discussions as to whether we will admit you into this country <laughs> with your Bible teaching. How many agree with what I'm saying? How many agree with what I'm saying? Yeah. But if I said I was bringing six universities, I'm going to build one in Devon, one in Cape Town, one in Georgetown, one in uh, East London, one in uh, Johannesburg, one in Pretoria, one in Middleburg, one in Petersburg. They'll say, ah, you are, you, are very, you are very welcome to our nation, uh, Mr. What did you say? What, what, what Mills? Mr. Miles? Okay. And, uh, uh, where will you get the money from? I said, oh, no problem. Money is not a problem. Oh, uh, very good. You can support the ANC also in addition to the university. <laughs> I'll be very popular with man. 
But the Bible says that which is highly esteemed among men is an abomination to God. I didn't say it to all the things I'm saying. I didn't say. I'm hiding behind Jesus. Come, come, brother, come. I'm hiding behind Jesus and I'm saying them. This is Jesus. I'm hiding behind. That which is highly esteemed among men, that means that which men really like, is an abomination to God. You can't see me. I didn't say it. Don't get angry with me. Get angry with Jesus. Okay, now, the next thing, if Jesus was to come to Devon, perhaps he would build the biggest hospital in the world. The largest center. Huh? To really help. And a specialist hospital for HIV in Africa. The largest which can accommodate 5,000 patients at a time. With 500 specialists. Neurosurgery, cardiothoracic surgery, brain surgery, ophthalmic surgery, ear and teeth, ear surgery, colon surgery, urinary surgery, gynecological surgery, HIV special, immunospecialists. How many think Mr. Tabo and Becky would be so happy? I, I wouldn't even need a visa. <laughs> so, uh, Mr. Mr. Miles, did you say this is Mr. Miles or Mr. You are very welcome to South Africa. <laughs> Supposing God was to become a man, maybe he would provide water, portable water, for all the villages in South Africa. Nobody will fetch water from a river again. How many know that I would be welcome if I came to provide water for every single person in South Africa? That's what World Vision does. Water. Boreholes. Perhaps he will construct the largest hydroelectric dam to provide electricity. Cheap electricity. Bigger than the Kenji Dam. Bigger than the dam in Zimbabwe. And the one in Zambia. And the one in Ghana. Free of charge, Mr. Mbeki. Free. How many agree that he would welcome me? Huh? The next one. He would set up centers to cater for refugees if God became a man. Refugees? Refugees for three weeks if he was to come for one year. Maybe he would build many orphanages for all the eight orphans. And schools in addition. You see like, uh, what's her name? Oprah Winfrey. Built something like that. You'd be welcome. Even Nelson Mandela would come for the opening. But would he come off our shepherd's camp? No, I don't think so. Because it's not really valuable. You know what I mean? It's not really, you know, it's Bible teacher, these pastors driving expensive cars and flying all over. And we have to pay all their bills. You know what I mean? Zigzag. The next one. I want to bring, Mr. Mbeke, I would, I would like to bring some uh, special investment, uh, $4.2 billion to prepare for the Olympic. Is it, are you having Olympic Games or what are you having here? World Cup. Yeah, I want to take care of one of the stadiums, the new stadiums. Are you building a new stadium? Uh, I'll take care of How many are you building? Four. I'll take care of two. Three. The only thing is just write him on the stadium. Hayward Mills International Stadium. No bills to South Africa. But if I come and say, I want to bring my Bible during the World Cup and be going around to team to preach to them. You know? And I want to go to every hotel where the people who come and stay, I want to go off my books there and talk to the people about, what would they say? I'm a nuisance. I'm a nuisance. They'll sue me for, 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 for what? Uh, for nuisance. <laughs> now, if God were to become a man for three years, maybe he would build many schools. Huh? If, so, so the question is, the Bible says that, but he made himself of no reputation and he was made in the likeness of man. And being found in fashion as a man. What did he do when he became a man? He did become a man. And I, I, I tell you, if God did become a man, there will be several things. Number one, his entry into this world would be unusual. If God was suddenly coming to man, how he came would be, and his entry was unusual. 
If God were to become a man, he would speak the greatest words ever spoken. Greater than Nelson Mandela, greater than, greater than all your freedom fighters. And Jesus' words are the greatest words ever spoken. Amen. Hallelujah! If God were to become a man, he would be sinless. He would have no sin. He would be perfect. President Bush is not perfect. We all know it. Tony Blair is not perfect either. They thought they were going to save the world. It looks like they have stirred up more trouble for all of us than anybody in, in the last hundred years. But Jesus has caused more good than anyone else. Give the Lord Jesus a shake and a shout. If God became a man, He would overcome the problems that have affect men like diseases, and He did. If God were to become a man, He would control the elements like the sea, the wind, the storm, the hurricanes. And he would tell, will you hurricane? Will you get back? And the wind would just go. <laughs> sorry, Lord. We didn't know that you were in the Bahamas. So we were coming that, that direction. And I was very sorry about that. We will, we will go to another place. And did Jesus not do that when he became a man? He became a man. He rebuked the storm. He rebuked the wind. He said, come on. You want to kill me now? Get back. And the storm said, apologies. A thousand apologies. <laughs> then, a thousand apologies. If God were to become a man... His visit, no matter how brief, if it's three days, one day, whatever, his visit will always be remembered. I said his visit will always be remembered. And his visit is always remembered. Lift your hand and give the Lord a shout of praise. Every Christmas, everywhere, all over the world, we remember that short visit of the Son of God, the Savior of this world. It's remembered by unbelievers. They put up lights. They put up trees. They celebrate. They go on holiday. The whole world goes on holiday to remember and to mark the day that God became a man and walked on this earth and ministered to us for three years. If God became a man, He would conquer man's greatest enemy, death. And when God became a man, He did exactly that. He conquered death Whilst he was around, he showed whether you are dead in the house. Like Jairus' daughter, I can raise you. He went and raised one from the dead. Another one, he raised, when you entered the coffin, huh? like the city to, on the city, to Nain, the city of Nain, when the dead body was being carried to the cemetery, he raised the boy from the dead. He said, young man, I say unto you, arise. He was able to raise something from the dead in the coffin. And to, to make all, clear all doubts from your mind, bury them now. Let me see. Lazarus was buried for four days. He went to the cemetery and raised four days. He said, okay, are you dead enough for everybody to believe? Sometimes God doesn't come because you are not dead enough. The problem is not big enough. He's waiting for the thing to be big before he will stretch his hand and you know that his power is real. He raised him from the cemetery. If God became a man. He would do all this. And he did. So what I want to know is, when God becomes a man, I mean, what is the max? And I believe that he would do what I call in this chapter, the maximum good that can be done. He would do the maximum. He wouldn't do just half a... He would do the best thing that can ever be done. Ever, 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 ever. <laughs> Better than anything any man can ever do. Huh? And what did he do? Not difficult to find. Not difficult. It says, and Jesus, he went about, Matthew 9, 35, all the cities, all the villages, teaching in their synagogues, and preaching the gospel, and healing every sickness among the people. That's what he did. That's why I call this book Preaching. And when you, when you go on, you find out that the reason why Jesus did pre preaching, teaching, and here because preaching addresses the root of every problem. All problems are related to sin. Death is related to sin. Diseases, sin, the corruption in this world, the wars, they are all the sin of mankind. The cause of every disaster and every chaos that we have in this world is the sin of this world. That is why he preached. He did the maximum good and attacked the problem at his very roots. And teaching and healing. 
I can't go into all that. But that's the maximum good. That's why I am preaching. Do you understand? I'm a qualified doctor. I can look after you right now. I can open a clinic. I am registered, qualified. Everything you can think of, I have it. And I even have, as I always travel with my stethoscope in my bag. I can do whatever I need. But the maximum good I can do is to be like my Savior. Is to preach the gospel. And to teach. And to heal. And to do what God has asked me to do. That's the best I can ever do. It's higher than medicine. It's higher than law. It's higher than business. It's higher than making money. It's the best thing that anybody can ever do for anyone. Is to preach the gospel. And to teach the word of God. And to heal the sick and cast out devils. And do what Jesus said we should do. Lift your hand and give the Lord a shout of praise, somebody. Preaching, teaching, and healing. That's the best thing that can happen for Pastor Oliver to preach and to teach and to heal. And that's the best thing your child can ever do is to preach and to teach and to heal. That's the best thing you can ever do is to be a preacher and a teacher and a healer. The best good you can ever do as you prepare for eternity is to do what our Savior did. And Jesus said, I have finished the work that thou gavest me to do. I have been to all the cities. I have been to the towns. I have been to the villages preaching and teaching and healing. When you read on in the book, you will find out how teaching and preaching really solve and help solve man's problems and help man and that's what we need to do as we prepare and that's why god is now looking for people to become preachers yeah he wants you to be preached do you preach are you are you a preacher no not good enough i'm not impressed i'm not impressed are you a preacher are you a preacher i've seen you in this church before well you know here when i came the last time You've not a preacher. Not good enough. Stand up. Not good enough. Not good enough. Not good. Young man, you don't preach. Not good enough. Are you a preacher? Stand. Stand, stand, stand. Teacher. A teacher. Smiler. Huh? You smile in the church. Sit down. <laughs> not good enough. Not good enough. That's what he's saying to you. Not good enough. More preachers must come from here. More teachers must come from here. More healers must come from here. Not good enough. 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 We want preachers. We don't want people. Stop admiring me. Stop admiring Pastor Oliver. Stop admiring the pastors who come and preach and teach. It's time for you to also rise up and preach and teach and do the work of God. You can do something as well. (laughs) Hebrews chapter 5. Turn with me. Have you found Hebrews? If you are somewhere around Amos, you are lost. Are you there? And verse 12. Notice, he says, For when for the time you ought to be teachers. Huh? For when for the time you ought to be teachers. I'm not going to read Hebrews 5. I'm not even going to bother to read the rest of the verse. He says, For when for the time when you ought to be teachers. There is a time you ought to... Your name again, please. Kevin. Kevin and, and David. Kevin. Gavin. Gavin. Gavin, there was a time you ought to be a teacher. David, a time for you to be a preacher. For when? For the time. The time. The time. The time you ought to be preaching. God is calling you to join the preachers. And that's why I wrote a little book on the tenth ministry. Because not, most of us cannot be full time. You can, I'm not talking about being full time, being paid by the church. Stop looking for a job in the church. Rather look for money to come and bring to the church. Stop coming to be employed by We don't need more people to be employed by the church. We need preachers. Do you understand what I'm saying? Do you understand what I'm saying? We are looking for preachers. And we are looking for teachers. And we are looking for healers. And people who practically do. That's why I came all the way here. Because I've come here to train preachers and teach. Tomorrow I'll be teaching you on how to be a preacher. And how to become an anointed preacher and an anointed teacher. I'm going to teach you how to grow in the ministry and how to become a minister. That's why I came. Today I'm just showing you why. I'm just showing you how and why. Why God wants preachers. Why God wants teachers. I'm trying to take your mind to eternity and to the new Jerusalem. So that you can know that look, you better start getting ready. 
Don't wait until the doctor will tell you your eye is cancer and this eye is going to become big like a balloon and you are going to die. Then you say, Lord, ah, here I am. Send me. <laughs> send me wherever you want to send. He can't send you with your big eye. The eye cannot go anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Mercy, <laughs> Zizo. <laughs> this is the hour. God wants help. He said, "I'm waiting to retire. When I retire, then I will, uh, I will get involved in the work of God. You see, uh, I'm involved in certain things in my work. They are doing certain things. When your hand cannot write, it's shaking." He cannot write. Now you want to come and work for the Lord with the shaking. And who will write? Both to write. Another have a write for you. You have written things, bad things for a long time, signing to the devil, signing checks to the enemy, and selling cigarettes, selling alcohol, and doing so many things. Now you want when your hand and he cannot write. Now your hand for the Lord to use your hand. When you were beautiful, you should have no face for witnessing and preaching. Now your face has become very old. You want to now go witness. When you go, people will be afraid of you. When they see you. She was teaching, she was doing that. And since she died, the people come who come around and say, She helped me, she did this, she taught me, she followed up. Nobody's talking about her clothes that she made. Nobody's saying she had a factory. Nobody's saying she was rich. They are all talking about the things that she did and how she ministered to them. That's the only thing that counts. Even on earth, you see that that's what people remember. Not good enough! Not good enough! Not good enough, sister! Not good enough! Yes, you stopped fornicating. Is that all? You stopped fornicating? You fornicated and now you've retired. After you've retired from the fornication, what are you doing for the Lord? <laughs> not good enough! It's not enough to stop doing bad things. You must start doing good. Going around pre-teaching and Give the Lord a shout of praise, somebody. I saw one brother, I said, I met him recently. And I saw he has not been coming in much to church and so on. I said, brother, you in, remember when you were in the world? You were in a nightclub. And he was saying, no, no, no. Then somebody came and I said, yeah, you were the owner of the nightclub. Me, the owner. I said, yeah, you were, the, you were always there. You were running the nightclub, owning the nightclub, doing things. You have run a nightclub, a disco. It's time for the number of people you have taken to hell before you can recover that number. And before you will add some so that you balance the ones that you have sent to hell. Maybe you sent 45. You have to find 45 to replace before you add five. <laughs> Some of you ladies, you slept with brothers who were going to serve God. After they fornicated, they lost confidence and they wouldn't serve God again. Now you've come to the church. Killer. You are a killer sister here in the church. <laughs> yeah. You have caused people to fall. And now you are in the church. Listen. Lord, I give you my heart. I give you my... After you have sent people to hell, you are giving him your heart and your soul. Maybe that brother would have been a pastor. He would have been a minister. But through you, through you, and your lascivious, licentious behavior, come to him and say, Hello, darling. <laughs> he has fallen. And now through you, so many people are gone astray. Hmm? I'm preaching good preaching. I'll still preach. Don't, don't, don't worry. I'm preaching good one. 
Tell the person next to you. Maybe he's talking about you. Tell the person next to you. Maybe he's talking about you. Some of you brothers, you came to the church, you've seen a sister singing in the choir, you've come to catch her, sleep with her, finish her off. Now you've come to the church, you are lifting your hand. Jesus, lover of my soul, I will never let you go. You've taken me, you've taken me from Rosalia. <laughs> From the miry clay. You yourself know what the miry clay is. Not good enough. Not good enough to just come out of the miry clay. What are you doing to add to the kingdom? God is looking for preachers. I came to train you to be a preacher. I need to see you here tomorrow morning. From the morning to the evening. I came to train you to be a preacher. To recover some of the people you've sent to hell. You sit there and continue being used as an agent of the devil. To drive people to hell. Making men of God fall. Driving sisters. Telling them you love them. They believe you. Their brains are like beds. You tell them lies and they believe you. And you are leading them. Not good enough. Not good enough at all. David. Did you hear what I said? Not good enough. Not good enough to be a good Christian who sits in front. I mean you are doing well to sit in front. People like sitting at the back. They like sitting at the back. Careful now. <laughs> but here you are right in front. You are not scared of the preaching. You are, you are bold. You are strong. It's like, preach brother, I'm right here. You get it? So it's, it's good, but not good enough. Sisters, you are the best preachers. God gave you the gift of talking. Every woman has a gift of talking. Talk, 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 chat, chat, chat. God gave you the gift of talking. To talk to the children, to talk at home, to talk to a husband. And a husband can never listen to all your stories. So God has also brought preaching so that you can also be a preacher. You have to convert your talking gift to preaching. Pastor Oliver, the, some of the best pastors, they are ladies. I'm you, sometimes they are married, sometimes they are not married. It doesn't matter. Best preachers, let them preach. I need you to become a preacher. Decide, I'm going to be like my Jesus. I'm going to do what is of eternal value. Forget these sand castles. And let's build. Let's sharpen ourselves. Let's learn about faithfulness and loyalty. Let's learn about everything that we have to learn about. And let's rise and build a church and churches. Oh, look, let me tell you, no matter what I do and how many times I come here, I don't live here. I can't live here. You live here. You are from here. It's your country. You speak the way they speak. You are from here. You, you, this is your country. This is your area. This is you. You have to do something nobody else can do. No one else can do what you are supposed to do. Hands around you. I see, when you are from a place... You, you can dance, you can preach circles around any visitor. You, you know what you are saying. The people know you and you know them. It's time for us to rise and do what we have to do. And I know there will be a great blessing. Rather, that, that way, we will have so much more money. You see, our church in Ghana is seen as one of the richest, blessed organizations and yet, when you hear me preaching, you will think I am against money. I mean, if you don't listen carefully. But I'm not against money. I am for him and his kingdom. And he will send money. He sends people. He sends money. And more than, we, I mean, more than we can. The projects that I am involved in, you don't have an idea. You don't have an idea. Pray for me sometimes. But God has his own way. Let's not lower the standards hoping that people will come and bring money. Let's keep the standard up there. Let's keep the standard up there. God will bring His own people. He will do His own work. And He will bless us as we do His will. Stand to your feet, everybody.
Do you know how to sing this song? Sit down. Do you know how to sing this song? To be pleasing you, pleasing you. You know how to sing it. This is all I really want to do. To be pleasing you, pleasing you. This is all I really want to do. Come on, can you sing? Just to be pleasing you, pleasing you. This is all I really want to do. To be pleasing you, pleasing you. This is all I really want to do. Sing with me to be pleasing. To be pleasing you, pleasing you. This is all I really want to do. To be pleasing you, pleasing you. This is all I really want to do. To be pleasing, to be pleasing you, want to do. To be pleasing, just to be pleasing you, please. You, this is all I really want to do. No, I want you to, don't keep it within. I want you to sing it out. To be pleasing you, pleasing you. This is all I really want to do. To be pleasing you, to be pleasing you. To be pleasing, to be pleasing, to be pleasing you, pleasing you. This is all, this is all I really want to do. To be pleasing you, to be pleasing you, pleasing you. This is all I really want. Lord, I want to live my life to please you. All that I hold dear, I give to you. Purify my heart. Purify my heart and make me holy. That I might walk the way that's pleasing you. To be pleasing you, pleasing you. This is all, this is all I really want to do. To be pleasing you, just to be pleasing you, pleasing you. This is all. as well. Lord, I lift my heart. Lord, I lift my heart in full surrender. Lord, I lift my heart in full surrender. All that I hold dear, I give to you. Purify my heart and make me holy. Purify my heart and make me holy. That I might walk the way. That I might walk the way. That, that I might walk the way that's pleasing you. Lord, I lift my hand in full surrender. Why don't you write it down? Take a pen and write it down. Lord, I lift my heart in full surrender. All that I hold dear, I give to you. 
Lord, I lift my heart in full surrender. Please write it down. All that I hold dear, I give to you. Purify my heart and make me holy. Purify my heart and make me holy. That I might walk the way that's pleasing you. That I might walk the way that's pleasing you. Lord, I lift my heart in full surrender. My heart and me holy That I might walk the way That I might walk the way that is pleasing you Just to be pleasing To be pleasing you Come on, sing it from your heart pleasing If you want to please him, then sing it to him It's a prayer It's this all I really want to do Just to be pleasing to be pleasing you, pleasing you, this is all I really want to do, just to be pleasing, to be pleasing, to be pleasing you, pleasing you, this is all. A convention where God is directing our hearts and our minds to Him and to the New Jerusalem. That we might walk the way that pleases Him. That we might do His will. That we might live for Him. Serve Him. Do His will. That we might be preachers and teachers and healers. That we might do His will. Oh, to be pleasing you, Lord. To be pleasing you, Lord. Not to be pleasing the president or please anybody, but to be pleasing you, Lord. To be pleasing you, Lord. 
to be pleased in you, Lord, to be pleased in you, Lord, to be pleased in you, Lord, to be pleased in you, Lord. Oh, Lord, we ask for it. We receive it, Lord. Oh, thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Father. Thank you, God. For your great blessing. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the name of Jesus. Thank Praise you, the name Father. of Jesus. In Jesus' name. Father, I pray for every hand that is lifted up tonight. I pray for a great blessing, Lord. I pray for a great blessing, Lord. I pray for a great blessing that you will increase your people and bless us, Lord. That we may walk the way that pleases you. That we may live for you, Lord. Serve you, Lord. Have our eyes fixed on things above, Lord. That we may be wise, Lord. And wiser and wiser and wiser. As we walk on in you. Oh God, I pray for preachers to be released from this church. And teachers, Lord, to be released from this church. And healers to go out from this place, Lord. That you will send us out, Lord. That you will raise us up and stir us up, oh God. That we might do your will and serve you and please you. Thank you Please for your blessing. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. As every head is bowed, every eye closed, maybe somebody invited you, but you're not a born again Christian. Want to say, Pastor, pray with me. I want to give my life to God. Lift up your right hand if you're here like that. Pastor, I want to give my life to Christ. I don't, I don't know Jesus as my Savior, but I want to give my life to Him. Lift your hand. God bless you. Every head bowed, every eye closed. You are here tonight and you want to say, Pastor, I want to live for him and I want to become a preacher and a teacher. Lift up just your right hand up high. I want to become a preacher and a teacher. I want to become a preacher. Oh, if you want to become a preacher, I want to say, Lord, I want to be a preacher. Just lift your right hand up high so that I can see. Let me pray for you. Father, thank you for all those with hands lifted up. Bless, Lord. For all these, will it be preachers and teachers? Thank you for your blessing. It will happen. In these three days, we thank you that the seed will be planted. And your will shall be done. And your blessings shall come forth. Especially in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Give the Lord a mighty clap offering.